So Tiger Lily wasn't exactly my favourite story in the world but I did actually enjoy reading it. It was a bit slower than I'm used to. It just sort of rumbled on, nothing really major happened and it was just a nice sort of slow paced interesting story but it just wasn't what I'm used to and therefore I didn't enjoy it as much as I thought it was going to. So many people have been raving about it to the skies and I thought yes I'm going to rave about it to the skies but I didn't. I just, it was good and I enjoyed it, it just wasn't what I was expecting. Overall, I actually really enjoyed Tiger Lily. It wasn't quite what I was expecting. I was expecting a kind of a sort of sinister, creepier atmosphere, kind of in keeping with the fairy elements of the book. And although there was definitely, um, there was a sort of darkness there, it was more um, that the book was punctuated by quite dark events which in a way weren't really examined in any great detail but they were just kind of what's well, kind of presented to you and then you're allowed to kind of make of them what you will. I found some of the scenes really disturbing and not because that they were told in a really gratuitous way but almost because of the subtlety of them how little fanfare particular events were given, the kind of quiet way of shocking you rather than kind of in your face shock. I think that it's not going to be a book that everybody enjoys purely because one it's a retelling of a classic and I think if you love a classic you might not like the spin that Jodie Lynn Anderson has put on the book. Um, I personally found it quite interesting to see a different perspective. The story itself was quite meandering, um, it wasn't so much that you got sort of swept along um, kind of ferociously turning pages. We all knew what was going to happen in the end. It was more kind of a meandering journey to that point and just um, just getting to know other characters in the story in a different from a different perspective and in a bit more detail. My overall thoughts about Tiger Lily are that it was good but I don't think it quite lived up to the hype. The ladies at um, Epic Reads absolutely raved about this and how much they loved it and how much you know it affected them emotionally. I just felt that it was interesting and it was different but I didn't quite connect with it in the same way. I would have liked to have, I don't know, go a bit deeper even still. It wasn't quite deep in the story but I felt there was parts where it still could have done more. I actually really enjoyed the perspective that we were given. The story was actually told from Tink's point of view, who, as we know, is actually a mute fairy. As a process of evolution, the fairies have developed um, deep empathy skills and can feel people's thoughts and feelings. And so because of that, we have this really kind of interesting, almost first person perspective of Tinkerbell's experiences and at the same time this kind of omnipotent third person point of view as she explains how the other characters were thoughts and feelings. But at the same time that third person point of view was still limited by Tinkerbell's um, interactions. I found it really interesting to see a different um, perspective of Tinkerbell and a much more kind of caring, thoughtful Tinkerbell and her opinions on Wendy and it's very interesting how we've kind of how that's twisted on its head and how just take it giving a little bit more information different point of view can actually reveal very different elements of the characters. I didn't find it difficult to get into at all I think because I'd been forewarned that it was this slightly unusual narration I was prepared and therefore I didn't find it uncomfortable or jarring at all. In a way it felt to me a bit like when you're watching a movie and there's a first person narrator and they kind of talk to the audience directly um, but then will then cut to the overall view of the film. I found Tinkerbell's point of view very hard to get around at first. It really threw me because I wasn't expecting it really from her point of view. It seemed like an interesting but strange choice. Surely it would have been nicer to have it from Tiger Lilies, considering she's such a dark and quiet character. We could really then get into her head 
and really see it. I felt we missed out on some of the things because it was told from Tink. But then again, it was very interesting that it was told from Tink because there were things that maybe we wouldn't have seen if it had been from Tiger Lily. I really enjoyed the fact that it was from Tink's point of view. I thought it gave the book such a unique feel and it sort of... It was quite nice the way it was like third person and first person all sort of rolled into one and I just thought that made it really more special and unique and that was one of the things I really did like about this story. It made it really easy to read in places. Uh, just to start with it's a little bit, ah what is happening? But then once you're used to it it's just so easy just to flow and you sort of get the emotions of the people as if you're like being narrated to the story and then you get Tink's emotions and it really gets you and yeah I just really like that about it. I very much liked Peter Pan in this. I thought he was portrayed really really well and really really interesting character, really quite dark and with a strange edge to him which I found really interesting and I really really enjoyed. I didn't like Wendy at all pompous little so-and-so but that was the point and I'm glad that I did feel that way. I really did like Tiger Lily in the end. I felt she went through a lot of changes, a lot of emotions. I disliked Giant but you're supposed to, he's the bad guy so that sort of works the way it is. But uh, there were three characters that I really really enjoyed reading this story. Uh, the first is Pine Sap. I thought he was a really cute character and I thought he was really nice and just such a lovely character that you could just you just wanted to wrap in your arms and protect him. Uh, and then there's TikTok. I thought he's an amazing character, and it's so nice to see someone like that transgender in this story. I was really really saddened by his journey and what actually happened, but I think he you know he's he's such a strong character, and he was really interesting to read about, and I, yeah, really like that about it. And thirdly, I really like Tiger Lily. She's this sort of wild, feral character, but she has so many things that you can relate to and just so many emotions that I just con completely understood and know what she was going through and I think a lot of readers would as well. It's all about belonging and feeling like you're part of something. And yeah, I just really like that. The characters that I liked the most um, were actually the secondary characters. I really loved Tiger Lily's um, father and um, her best friend, Sapling. I was quite frustrated at times with Tiger Lily and her inability to see um, this amazing support network that she had right there. That's not to say that I didn't like Tiger Lily either. She was a, she was just a very complicated character. She had her flaws. She had these amazing strengths, and at the same time, she also had this real vulnerability. Overall, my favourite character probably was TikTok. Um, I thought it was really fantastic to have a transgendered character in the storyline and I loved how that was just completely accepted by the village in which they were living and there were some real kind of emotive gut-wrenching scenes involving TikTok that I think will stay with me for a long time. So I've not really read anything that's exactly like Tiger Lily but I would probably recommend Scarlet by A.C. Gougen, which is a sort of another adaptation of a sort of mythical thing. It's about um, Robin Hood instead of Peter Pan. And also um, Wendy by Karen Wallace. I thought this is a really cute book as well. I read that when I was growing up, so I can't really remember what happens, but that's a Peter Pan adaptation that I really enjoyed. My recommendations based on Tiger Lily um, has to be uh, the Splintered series by A.G. Howard. Look, Splintered. Beautiful. And Unhinged. So those are the first two books in the trilogy. The third book we're going to have to wait till next year. The reason that I'm recommending these is that like Tiger Lily, they are a retelling of a classic tale with a very different and unique slant. And at the same time, they capture the kind of 
dark, macabre, creepy undertones of the original tale, but just take them that step further. The Splinter series is absolutely fantastic. Um, it grips you from the very first page. Um, you just read that first page, that first chapter, and you just know that Alicia is like no other white heroine that you've met before um, and the story just grabs you and it twists you and turns you and it's just a fantastic series. I recommend it um, 100%. My recommendations would be something like The Snow Child by Ewan Ivory. Owen? Ewan? I don't know. Um, this is another fairy tale retelling. It's very sad beautifully written story set in the snow and it's absolutely it's an adult novel but i really really enjoyed it something else i would recommend something i really really want to read is um philip pullman's grim tales um inspired by the fairy tales of grim brothers 